to like being Kim Boyd simply through listening to clarinet multiphonics and the kind of fragility that I was attracted to within them. That then inspired the rest of the piece to come about because the other sounds within the composition, they're kind of quite fragile and delicate that generally slowly builds into something quite solid. So the opening of the piece is a delicate tapping on the piano keys, which is ornamented through just adding in clarinet multiphonics and some flutes multiphonics as well. Then that slowly becomes more solid toward the end of the piece where everyone is kind of together and kind of battering away. So into light being, light can be taken in two different ways, the kind of lightness of the music or lightness of something extra musical and into a being of solid form. Into light being can be seen in two different ways. One, a kind of exploration of the sonic properties of the multiphonics, the instruments, the kind of delicate nature of the sounds that I'm asking the performers to play. Or a kind of conceptual into from lightness, from brightness of, of these sounds into a more solid dark core. So it can be seen in two different ways depending on what way you want to look at it. But to me it's just a an exploration of sounds because very few of my compositions have a an extra musical inspiration and in fact the pieces, the piece names usually come about after the composition is completed. So with this piece, I was just pondering what it could be, what the piece could mean, and into light being came about after the piece had been finished, after I'd written the double bar line, and that's where the name came. So it kind of describes the structure of the piece. So there's kind of two main structural points within the composition. The, delicate opening material that at the, its core is kind of a piano, the pianist is stroking the, the keys of the piano and that is ornamented by the other instruments adding kind of ricochet on the, um, the violin or multiphonics with the clarinet or the flute mimicking those two, two different sounds. Then the other structural point within the composition is kind of where everything builds and then comes together in a, a unison chord, which is kind of quite grunty, quite dark, and then it kind of descends back into that lightness before that dark, solid, solid core of the music comes back again to kind of climax at the end. One of the things I think is really important for composers to do is share knowledge. Knowledge and expertise of things outside of music that they may be experienced in or have uh, great skills in. So to that end, one of the things I've done over the last few years is lecturing on how to self-release your music and understand the rights and registrations around that because I've been doing that since about 2015 and no one in classical music really talks about it. So. That's kind of developed over the last five or so years until I've released this book. So I've just self-published this book uh, at the start of 2024. The Guidebook to Self-Releasing Your Music. It does what it says, really. It um, is meant to be a book that covers everything you need to know to release your music and earn money from it. So it includes things like budgeting, fundraising to be able to pay the costs around recording, uh, PR, marketing, advertising, branding, rights and registrations around PRS, PPL, MCPS, how to run a recording session, and various other bits and pieces around the industry and my thoughts and experiences around doing it for the last almost 10 years. The whole point of the book is that after reading it, you can do it yourself, or if you decide that that's not what you want to do, you'll go be able to go to a record label from a place of knowledge and understanding rather than ignorance. So you'll know exactly what they can do for you and what you need to ask them to do for you and what you might need to do to support them with what they're doing. So the guidebook to self-releasing your music, I'll have copies of it 
at uh, the concert on Saturday at Queen's. I'll also have copies um, during the talk that I'm giving at lunchtime at Queen's for young and emerging composers. But if you can't make it to either of those events, then you can also get it from my website, matthewhiteside.co.uk, or Amazon, or Waterstones, or various other online booksellers. But ideally, come to the concert on Saturday evening in Queen's with the Hardware and Solace Ensemble, and pick up a copy then, and hear some great new music at the same time. Mm -hmm.